All right, so in this video, I want to talk about how to make a particle burst using Unity's new VFX system. I know I have an older video on how to use, uh, I think it's Shuriken or whatever their um, old particle emitter thing in the inspector window. I'm trying to transition my stuff into their newer tools that they're releasing, and I imagine many of you might feel a little bit, little bit behind on that. So I'm gonna show how to do a very similar particle burst with their new system and maybe add a few new things to it. Something you can, that you can reuse because I find myself wanting like like just a simple particle burst for uh, gameplay effects. Let me show you something I've been kind of just messing around with, little prototype. What I want to show you how to do is uh, this explosion thing you're going to see. You see how those particles just burst outwards? Um, I added a little ring effect too, but I'm, I'm not going to worry about that. I'm just trying to keep it simple. Uh, I just want to show you that burst, how the particles just flew outwards like that. Um, you could add that same thing to like collectibles or just impacts or whatever. Uh, we'll try and make it reusable and I'll show you how to expose some stuff with that. And to show you one more quick example of more accurately what we're going to build, I have this other scene open and you'll see if I, if I hit the play button. See that? Just really simple particle effect. I will be using the default uh, little particle sprite too, so you should be able to pull this into any project you want. Okay, if you have not already, make sure you are in a URP project, like just an empty one. I'll tell you, I normally make a folder here called standard assets or extras or something. You can move all those um, additional assets out of the way inside of there just to keep them out. And I usually do like an underscore game or something that I can keep all of my personal assets in so you can separate out the third party stuff. Anyways, once you have this, go ahead and make a new scene. If you're in a newer version of Unity, you can see I'm in 2020.2, um, just, it, it doesn't really matter. Just use a basic, okay. And I'm just gonna save the scene out just in case. Set a game, call this particle test. Now, in order to use the VFX graph, which is their newer uh, VFX system, you need to go to window package manager. You first need to make sure that you import it. Now you're not gonna see this. You're probably gonna see, um, this, like this number of packages. If you click on this and you go to, not just inside my project, but inside of Unity Registry right there, then you should see everything. And there's lots of cool stuff here. Like you can you can get some, some of the new UI stuff or uh, you know j just lots of stuff. Um, make sure you go down to Visual Effect Graph and click Install. And you may have to wait a little bit. And once you have that done, I'm gonna close out. So once I've done that, I want to create a definition for a new type of VFX. So to do that, this is gonna be an asset file down inside of your project window. Click down here, right click, create. And once you have that package installed, you'll see something called visual effects. And then you have some options here. Oh, that's kind of the annoying thing about uh, these drop down windows. Okay, there we go. Visual effect graph is the one we want. So this is creating the like a template for this visual effect. So I'm just going to title this VFX underscore, we'll call this particle burst. So we have our particle burst here. You'll see some of this stuff. Um, don't worry about this yet. This is more important whenever we start triggering it. You could either double click this to open it or you could click this button. Let's do it that way. Click open. And it's going to bring up a new window that's going to just look wild and, and unlike things you've seen before inside of Unity. Uh, that's just how their newer systems are. I'm going to take this window and normally like to dock it down here. Okay. So I'm just docking it next to where my game window is so I can uh, see it inside of my scene at the same time. And if you see this asterisk right here, this means that it's currently unsaved. So I'm just gonna hit the save button, even though it, it doesn't mean anything because we haven't done anything yet. Uh, you wanna periodically hit that save button to make sure that you save your work. Now, how do we get started? Um, first, you know, we can make a simple plane or something just so we can see it. And if I were to take my particle burst definition and I were to drag it into the scene like that, you will see something like this. So the way all of this works is there's little groupings of how the particle system is uh, playing. So if you've never messed with their particle effect system before, their new VFX graph, uh, you know, there's some initialization. So what is the starting attributes of our particle? So thing like 
you could set the size here or how does it spawn or whatever. That's gonna be up top. And then after that, we're gonna go to how it updates. And then lastly, this is just how it's gonna be drawn. Uh, so like physics type of things we'd maybe put here and then um, you know how it's rendered, like if it color changes or whatever, then we would wanna put that down here. And you can kind of mix, mix and match it a little bit, but broadly that's how you wanna think about this. And then inside of each of these sections, we can we can change things. So like if we want to initialize this at a different rotation, if we click down here and we hit spacebar, we'll see all these different nodes and you know, like we type in uh, set age, set you know alpha, angle, whatever. We can add those blocks here and then we can remove them or add new ones. So that's just kind of how it works. And um, I think the best way to learn this is just to follow along with some tutorials, maybe try to make your own stuff and just experiment. Um, because it is still kind of new and you know it may even change by the time you see this video. Let's think about what we want. We want a single burst of particles originating from a position going outwards really quickly and we may want to change things like the color and whatnot. This window over here will allow us to set some parameters that will show up in the inspector. So if you've used Unreal, you could think of this as like exposing variables inside your blueprint or whatever so that the designer can just click here and see some properties. See, we don't see any right now, but if we were to make, um, for example, we may want to define what is the mask for the uh, particle effect. So if we go, if we click this little plus here and we go to texture 2D and uh, maybe let's rename this mask and we expand that. We can actually choose what is the default texture that we use to for this particle. If it was a if we had like a star texture, then these would look like stars. This is the default right here. But if we change this to just type in default, so you may recognize this old default particle right there. You'll see how it doesn't change what's in the scene because this we're just creating a variable and setting a new default. We haven't really hooked this up into anywhere. But if I were to save this, you'll see on this particle effect, we've just exposed, it, it's like we're creating a variable uh, and then we can do some things with that. So for example, the mask involves how it's rendered. So if we scroll down to output particle quad and zoom in a little bit, this main texture right here, if we drag this in, we drag it in to create a node and then we connect it, we're saying, now we want to use this mask that we created over here as a variable and you know very similar to blueprints if you have used unreal if not uh, i hope this kind of makes sense but now if we go into our um our inspector for this particle that we're viewing you see how we could swap this out right we could we wanted checkers or something we could even have our own custom masks if we want uh, but it's good to set it up as a default inside of here so anyways that's just how we can use some properties as just a primer. So I think now it makes sense just to go top to bottom. Uh, what do we wanna do and just try to make this burst effect now that we understand this. And this will allow us to make something reusable. So, you know, a designer could come in here and change the number of particles or the mask or whatever, and you could reuse it in your own projects, which is actually really, really cool.